What is going on guys, it's you here bringing you a, another review on Ed and Zero. And I gotta say, this episode was actually pretty good. We had a lot going on in this episode, and quite honestly, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that this episode had a lot going on, because it's getting to the good stuff. It really is, and I feel like this is going to be kind of like a cliffhanger uh, at the very end, and we're going to have to wait for Season 3 of Ed and Zero. But... Before I continue, guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All that good jazz, it helps out tremendously. I would appreciate the support. It means the world to me, guys. So make sure to like, leave those comments, subscribe if you're new. All that good jazz, it helps out tremendously. But let's get into it. So we actually start this episode with seeing Jin basically getting all, in, all up in Sister's face, which, by the way, I think he was lucky for doing so. Uh, he is basically wanting to know if Klein is going to be fixed. And this, of course, is going to be kind of difficult because of the fact that uh, Klein isn't sick. And so there's more that is going on that Sister wants to know about. And, of course, the only way of knowing this is by asking Klein herself and seeing, hey, what exactly happened? You know, what led to you being this way? And, of course... Jin doesn't want that to be revealed. He does reveal a little bit by saying if she is to speak about her past, then it's going to be problematic and it's not going to be good. So, of course, this is kind of like, you know, leaves a curiosity in Sister. However, they don't have much time to wonder because of the fact that we actually start seeing that the ship is going to be attacked soon. There are aerial uh, ships attacking and, of course, all the main force is down on the ground and they're being attacked as it, as it is and so they're having to deal with that issue so i do like how we have uh, both Jin and laguna say all right well you know i need this place to still be here so i'm going to help out the client also joins in and i love that even moskoy actually helps out that actually to me is great to be actually seeing how the group is starting to form more and of course we get to see more of the cast and just it's overall just great development in that sense so i'm very happy to see this but we have uh, the group running away of course they're having to still run from these robots that run into one of them who has not been affected by the virus so let's just call it that like he has it has not been affected by these uh, the will of Ziggy, if you want to call it that, even. And we see that they want to reassure it by saying, you're going to be safe, it's going to be fine. But this robot gets destroyed by the this person named Mora, who we see is part of Poseidon Nero's group. Now, these guys are no pushovers. You actually see how Mora is able to kind of like restrain all of the group within a second so he actually is able to kind of use his glue to kind of hold them still but shiki does not hold back he, we actually see him using his gravity ether and actually getting out of it and knocking him out of with a tree which was kind of fun to watch um the reaction was funny as well but we see how the other two, uh, Brittany and I believe Oric was the other name, both of them, they actually observe Shiki and they're kind of curious as to what exactly is going on with him. Like, why does he seem to have a familiar power up? And we find out that he actually resembles a lot of Shura, which is the person they serve. And they notice that they both have the same abilities in the sense that they both control gravity. Uh, but this doesn't change the fact that we actually have Shiki kind of getting, I want to say, a bit, you know, in a disadvantage when it comes to fighting Mora. But luckily, he's able to kind of get out of the situation and get the, everyone out of the glue. We did have this little fan service moment, which was great. I uh, enjoyed that. However, the more important thing is we see that the aerial attack is still ongoing. And despite that... Uh, Jin, Klein, and well, Moskoy and Laguna, all of them are fighting. It's still not enough. In fact, we see Orc jumping onto this and like starting to take down the aerial droids and trying to take them out. However, the group does get separated uh, because of the aerial attack. Bombs come out of everywhere, 
they all get separated and we find out from hermit who has been investigating all of the events is that if they don't get out of there they too will be affected by this this virus and it is dangerous if they get affected because they're more powerful they have way more damage that they could do which we hardly see her fighting and with sister we know that she is no pushover either this could be very very bad and so they actually hermit actually asks for uh wise's help and so we see that he gets taken away but this leaves a scenario for, for who is going to fight who at this point we see that Brittany is going to be fighting homora excuse me uh Rebecca, Homura will be fighting Mora, which is kind of funny. And Orc and Shiki start their fight. And it's kind of a weird way because we see that they Orc doesn't really want to fight Shiki. He mostly wants to fulfill the order that Poseidon has given him, which is to destroy these robots because Ziggy has affected them. But we see that they still fight. And this is actually kind of fun to watch because I don't think that they're all that bad. And you know, obviously, manga, you guys, we all know that. But we we see this fight, and I'm thinking it's gonna be a good one. And I actually have been very pleasantly surprised with what's going on. But let me know what you guys think. I'd love to know your thoughts. As always, though, guys, stay safe, take care of yourselves and others, and I will catch you all later.